About a year ago now, my first few tutorials included a system for buttons interacting with other Udon behaviors that I called contextual buttons, but you can really just call event buttons now, as well as a video on animating a door opening closed. Now, both of these videos are at this point rather outdated, so I thought I'd go back and do them both again as one video. Today, we're going to be going through and animating this door with a button that are both two different Udon behaviors. Let's get to it. So we'll start off by animating our door originally. So I have an animations folder. If I click on the parent object for our door and everything, I'll just go to the animation tab and hit create. So we can create a new animation for this. I'm going to call this sci-fi doors one open and we're going to start recording. Now I want to record the state of two different objects, the panel left and panel right for the doors. Since I want to start with them closed, I'll select both of them. Right click on position and do add key and that sets a keyframe right here at the beginning. Now I can drag up to set one second and then I can put the doors at whatever position I want them to be at for it to actually be open. And I can hit play and we see that the doors are animating open smoothly. I'm going to do the same thing for sci-fi doors one closed. So I'll go sci-fi doors one close. And then we'll just record a different animation for this one. I want to keep their state as it is right now for the end frame. So I'll select both of them again and do add key. And then back at the beginning of the animation, we'll go and put it in the correct spots. We have a closing animation as well. Now Unity by default sets these things to loop. And as you see here, this is what it would look like if it's looping. We don't want our door to be constantly doing that. So we can just click on our animation assets and turn off loop time for the two different ones. Now inside of our animator, which got generated on this, we can double click that, and that will bring us to our animator tab here. And by default, since the open animation is what I made first, this is what it wants to play by default, but I want it to be closed, so I'll right click on the closed animation and do set as layer default state. Now I want to animate from this one to this one, so we'll do make transition there, and to close it again, we just make transition back. Right now, this happens by itself, so it just keeps opening and closing, which we don't really want. So we'll tell it whether or not to open or close based on a Boolean value, just a true false. So I'll make this bool here and I'll call this open. And for the first animation transition, I'll set the condition to be open to be true. And we also wanna change a few things in here. I'm gonna have this take the whole duration of it so we'll use percentage and one is essentially 100 here. So I'll just use one and we don't want it to automatically exit. So I'll turn off the exit time and has exit time. And we'll do the exact same setup for the transition from open back to closed, but open will be false for this. So I'll set this to be one and clear that out. So now we can actually test this here in Unity just by pressing this button if I hit play. Now we'll be able to actually see the door transition in and out of the open and closed states. So it starts off by going through the closed animation. And if I click that, you'll see it opens and closes again. And then if I click it before it's done animating, it'll buffer that action. So you see it will swap that value there and go through. Now, us pressing this button right here isn't at all how we want this to work in game. We want to press this button right here. So we need to make a way for it to interact with the door. But since I'm doing a setup for a event button right now, we're going to have a script that acts as a controller for the door itself. So I'm actually going to go to sci-fi doors one, do add component udon behavior. And I'm going to create a new Udon graph program asset right here and call this door controller. We'll just put this onto our door object and open that up. And in here, we really only need access to one thing and that's our animator. So I'll do a new variable here, type animator. And I'll just call this anim for shorthand. Do the drop down here and hit public so that it appears over in our inspector and drag animator into that slot. Now, if we want the action for the door to toggle open and closed, we need to have an event that handles that. And since we aren't using interact to click on the door itself, we want to have a custom event that we're making ourselves. Search event 
custom as the first one there. And then I'll just name this toggle door one word. Now we need something to actually happen in here. So we're going to swap the bool value of open in our animator. This is going to be near identical to how I did it for the mirror toggle originally. So you were just going to get its current value, use unary negation to flip that value and then set it to that value. So we'll do get bool. Now on here, it starts as int, but we're gonna want it as string so we can type the name open to match this parameter here. And this gets the value of that bool. We'll flip that value with unary negation and we'll put that into the set bool value of the animator. So set bool. Now we also want this to be a string instead and name this open. And then connect bool in there from our unary negation into the setter. And of course, then we'll connect all of this up into our custom event flow right here. So now in Unity, we can actually use SignMU to test this event out without having to make a button for this. Of course, it's just for testing though. Now, SignMU adds little helper components onto anything that has an Udon behavior or certain other things. And one of the things that we get here is a dropdown through the SignMU Udon helper. We have run custom event, and it gives us a list of all of the events that we have on that script. So we can just hit this button, and you see the animators flipping and the door is opening and closing. So we just need a way to interact with this event and call it through a different script that we're gonna have on this button. So on the button, I'm gonna add a Udon behavior as well. And we're going to create a new graph program asset that I'm gonna call event button, one word. And we'll just put that onto our button right here. And we're going to open that up and set a way for us to communicate with that event on that Udon behavior. So we, one, need a variable for the Udon behavior. We'll do Udon behavior, and I'm just gonna call this behavior, and set this to be public. And you see it shows up over here, so I'll just drag the base object in that has the Udon behavior on it. And then we need the name of the event that we're going to be interacting with. So we'll need a new string, and we're just gonna call this event name and of course set this to be public as well now in our actual object here the name is toggle door so on our button i'm going to set the event name to be toggle door exactly the same now for this one we actually want to use our interact event so we'll search interact that's the first thing that shows up we'll just use that and then for the event we grab out from our udon behavior and we do send custom event We'll connect that in here. And then we just need to put our event name node and connect that to the event name right here. If we go back into our scene, we, we still have everything lined up with the names correctly. So we can actually just hit play and use SignMU to test this out. It'll work exactly like a will in game. Now the button is talking to the door controller, which is talking to the animator. It's a little bit of abstractness, to disconnect all the things together. But this allows for a lot more customization on different actions. And of course, you can make any script you want that has custom events on it like that and call that with this exact same script. You don't have to make a new Udon behavior to handle specifically one light and one sound or one animation or something. You can just have those events in controllers and toggle it with the same button. So as you see, this is working fine here in Unity. So we're going to go through and make the Udon Sharp version now as well. It's going to be pretty much the same. So I'll just create a new U Sharp script and I'll call this door controller underscore sharp. And I'm actually going to put that into the same slot that we got the original one from. So if we put door controller sharp into the slot here, you'll see it changes into an Udon sharp component. I'll just double click this to edit it in Visual Studio. If we go back into Unity, actually, we can open up our Udon graph so that we can directly translate this event into our Udon sharp. We don't need the start event, so we can just delete all that. And we really just need the animator value. So we'll do a public animator anim. And then we need to interact with it with our custom event. So we'll do a public void to create the event and call that toggle door. 
And then inside of here, we'll just do anim.setbool. And in that, we'll give it the name of it, so open. And we're going to set it to the opposite of its current value. Exclamation point for opposite, anim.getbool. And inside there, we say open once again. And there we go. That is the whole door controller script in U Sharp. And now we can go and make the event button itself. Again, I'll just do create U Sharp script, event button sharp. And as soon as that compiles, we'll put it onto our button object like we did with the last one, and then open that up and recreate that as well. We'll just slot that in there, double click the event button sharp, and it'll open up here. I'll open up the graph as well, so we can put it over here and have a reference. And again, we don't need the start event, so we can just delete that, but we do need two variables. So we'll need a public udon behavior that I named behavior and a public string event name. Now we want to use interact, which is a VR chat event, which requires us to override it in order to get the correct autofill. So we would do public override. And then we can just type interact and then it autofills like that. We do not need the base interact event. So we'll just clear that out and we'll do behavior, which is our root on behavior dot send custom event. And we'll pass this event, the event name variable. And there we go. That is the whole script here as well. If we go back into Unity, we can test this all out with CyanMU and then we'll do one final test with it all in game. You probably know what to expect by now with the door opening and closing. So I'll just walk up to it and then you'll see that the door correctly opens and closes when I press the button. And if I double click it, it'll cue it to close it. And while it's open, I can pass through. And while it's not open, it has colliders, so I cannot pass through. And there you go. That is the animation toggle event button tutorial combo. Hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, it's been a while since I've touched on these two topics and they're two of my older videos. So they both kind of needed to be updated a bit, especially since the event buttons are at the time contextual buttons were my second video that I ever made which means it's very, very poor quality. We're just gonna launch up here into game to do one final test and that should be it for the absolute proof. Uh, I hope that's it because Unity just crashed anyway. So <laughs> hopefully nothing broke. Walk up and there we go. The door functions as intended, perfect. I'll have to go figure out why Unity just crashed in the background. Or I'll probably never figure it out, honestly. Uh, but yeah, hope you all enjoyed, and we'll see you all next time.